Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received the Secretary General of the GCC, Dr. Nayaf Al Hajraf, at Safriya Palace upon his visit to the Kingdom. He extended a report on the progress of the GCC General Secretariat to His Majesty the King and the ongoing development of GCC cooperation. His Majesty welcomed the guest and discussed with him various topics in GCC affairs. He expressed appreciation for the General Secretary's FX in supporting the process of GCC cooperation. His Majesty praised the pioneering work by the GCC in various fields and its constant support to the security, stability and safety of the region and the world. His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's keenness on further developing the GCC and the cooperation between its states in all interests of all. For his part, the guest expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm hospitality as well as his directive to support GCC cooperation. He praised the Kingdom's efforts in this regard and its achievements for the benefit of the peoples of the Member States, wishing the Kingdom further prosperity and development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delivered a speech at the World Health Organization's World Health Assembly Special Session. His Royal Highness's speech outlined the importance of further bolstering international cooperation on pandemic preparedness and response when facing global health challenges. The World Health Organization is holding the World Health Assembly Special Summit from the 29th of November to the 1st of December to discuss mechanisms for strengthening joint efforts and developing the global measures necessary to confront and prevent epidemiological challenges. Your Excellency Madam President, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, on behalf of His Majesty the King of Bahrain and the people of Bahrain, Thank you for having me speak to you this morning. As a global community, we have for decades ignored the urgent calls of public health experts who time and again warned us of fault lines in the global health order and the glaring health disparities between and within nations. Today, as we mourn the loss of over 5 million fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, and as we begin the difficult task of rebuilding the lives of those who survived this devastating pandemic, we must finally be prepared to listen and to act. The coronavirus exposed the world's lack of preparedness and exploited the links that bind us. Without a global plan of action, countries around the world turned inwards, and as a result, we witnessed the breakdown of early detection and alert systems, the absence of standardized containment protocols, the proliferation of misinformation, and a spate of market shocks and supply chain disruptions, which still leave many without ready access to essential goods, diagnostic tools, treatments, and vaccines. It is imperative that we do not lull ourselves into complacency with the false belief that this pandemic is a once in a century anomaly. Instead, we must seize upon this opportunity to enact real change, to approach global pandemic preparedness with the same determination we bring to geopolitical threats to our collective safety and security. Only then will we be able to build a global health system that can one day serve as our first and most effective line of defense against the emergence of communicable diseases. The Kingdom of Bahrain, recognized as the coronavirus was just beginning to gather steam and before it reached our shores, that preparedness and collaboration would determine our ability to successfully navigate a crisis of this magnitude. A full month before registering our first case, we established a war room that would serve as the nerve center of the country's containment efforts, marshalling resources and people from military and civilian agencies to coordinate a whole of country response. Bahrain adopted a policy of radical transparency, which fostered a sense of public trust and collective responsibility. Community leaders, medical practitioners, policymakers, citizens and residents all came together to form one team that united around a firm sense of shared purpose. This spirit of unity permeated every corner of society. For example, over 50,000 citizens in a country of just 1.5 million people offered their services as volunteers in many different fields. Armed with this team spirit, we were able to increase bed capacity by a factor of six, secure alternative housing for people living in crowded accommodation, and equip hospitals with enough PPE, ventilators, and medicine 
As a result, Bahrain has one of the highest recovery rates in the world. As well as a vaccination coverage of 93% of the eligible population, of which approximately 50% have now been boosted to date. But physical health was not our only priority. Economic and mental health featured prominently in our response. With community buy-in and a world-leading test, trace and treat system, we were able to avoid the brunt of the crisis without ever having to institute a national level lockdown. Bahrain's efforts, however effective as a national level response, are no substitute for a global public health system capable of stopping a pathogen in its tracks. But our experience is instructive insofar as it testifies to the life and death importance of preparedness and early intervention, and demonstrates the value of transparency, collaboration, and an enduring commitment to data-driven science-led policymaking. We believe these same principles should guide our discussions here today. Ladies and gentlemen, the coronavirus has beset the world with many challenges. None, however, are insurmountable if we are willing to work together. Over the last two years, we have witnessed scientists from across the world leapfrog years of research to develop highly effective vaccines in record time. And while the pandemic is full of similar moonshot moments, we have to ensure equal and ready access to these game-changing innovations, particularly in the context of new emerging variants. In fact, vaccine coverage, which stands at over 40% globally, falls under 3% in some countries. And with around 1 billion idle doses in other nations, millions of avoidable deaths are likely to occur. We can solve this challenge and others if only we muster the political will to once again look outwards. It is our hope that the nations of the world will join forces and heed the lessons of this crisis in pursuit of a united front that serves the moral imperative of protecting present and future generations from the scourge of pandemics. Thank you very much. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gudebia Palace. The cabinet noted the outcomes of the discussions held by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein, and the importance in further strengthening bilateral cooperation between the two countries. The Cabinet commended the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to UAE and His Royal Highness' attendance at the National Day celebration at Bahrain's Pavilion at Expo 2020 Dubai. The Cabinet praised the UAE's success in hosting this global event and recognised the national effort that enabled Bahrain's participation in the exhibition, noting that participation reflects the culture of the Kingdom and its development progress. The Cabinet also congratulated the President, a Government and people of the UAE on the occasion of the UAE's 50th National Day. On the occasion of Bahraini Women's Day, the Cabinet expressed its congratulations to all women in the Kingdom and praised the efforts of the Supreme Council for Women, headed by the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Abika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in the advancement of Bahraini women. In light of the discovery of a new COVID-19 variant across several countries, the Cabinet affirmed its commitment to continuously monitor global developments and stated that Bahrain is currently free of the new variant. The Cabinet affirmed that necessary measures will always be taken to protect Bahrain citizens and residents. The concerned authorities have been directed to continue their monitoring procedures. The Cabinet commended the public's adherence to all precautionary measures and highlighted the importance of continuing to adhere to them, including receiving a vaccination and booster shot to ensure the health and safety of all. The Cabinet then discussed several memorandums with the following outcomes. Firstly, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the Financial Services Sector Development Strategy 2022-2026 as part of the priority development of promising sectors within the Economic Recovery Plan, launched in accordance with the Royal Directives of His Majesty the King and announced by the Cabinet, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. 
a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to amend the list of health professions issued by Edict No. 24 of 2016. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU between Bahrain and South Korea on cooperation in the field of civil service. A memorandum by the Minister of Interior related to the digitisation of some services provided by the General Directorate of Civil Defence at the Ministry of Interior on e-government portal. This includes services related to issuing fire safety certificates for buildings, services related to security and safety equipment and the issuance and renewal of licences. A memorandum by the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning regarding the instruction of an option to extend the validity of building permits for an additional year, provided that the extension request is submitted before the permit expires. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the Government's response to a proposal submitted by the Council of Representatives. Secondly, the Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A joint memorandum by the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning and the Minister of Labour and Social Development in relation to occupational safety and enhancing safety requirements for contractors at work sites, the preservation of lives and property and the legal responsibilities of the relevant authorities. A memorandum by the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning regarding progress on the implementation of priorities, plans and programmes in accordance with the 2020 to 2022 Government Action Plan. The Cabinet then took note of ministerial reports regarding Bahrain's participation in the 12th Conference of the Arab Ministers of Education, the 17th edition of the Manama Dialogue, the foreign participation of ministers and senior officials in December 2021, as well as a review of the calendar of events from November 2021 to March 2022. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the seventh intake of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme at Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the importance of investing in the Kingdom's national cadre to help achieve the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted that further strengthening the skill set of the young public sector employees is vital to support ongoing government strategies, initiatives and plans. His Royal Highness congratulated the Fellows on their selection to participate in the year-long programme and wished them success in achieving the Fellowship's vision and objectives. His Royal Highness commended the project's ideas and initiatives of previous Fellows and noted the importance of providing quality opportunities for young government leaders to ensure their contributions to the Kingdom's ongoing advancement and development. For their part, the members of the seventh batch of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and expressed their appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting the programme. The Fellows concluded by pledging to gain the necessary skill sets needed from the programme to support the Kingdom's ongoing comprehensive development. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting.
National Guard President General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa received Asian Football Confederation, the AFC President and First Vice President of FIFA, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed praised the continuous success of the AFC and their role in developing regulations and laws to raise the level of clubs and teams. The AFC President hailed the National Guard's role in defending the nation's gains and achievements under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the President of Bahrain Classic Cars Club, Sheikh Ahmed bin Ali Al Khalifa, President of Al Shura Club, Sheikh Mohammed bin Daesh Al Khalifa, President of Bahrain Club for Obstacle Course Racing, Sheikh Khalid bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, President of Makaba Club, Ali Mahoun, President of Speed Racing Club, Walid Al Ahmad. President of Bahrain Riders Club, Abdurrahman Janahi. President of Alaka Club, Maki Ahmad. President of the Ice Hockey Club, Abdullah Al Qasimi. President of the Bahrain Wireless Car Racing Club, Majid Al Thakafi. President of Motor Racing Club, Mazin Al Hili. Vice President of the Bahrain Motorcycle Club, Jazm Haji. And a member of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Chess Club, Ibrahim Abashid as well as a number of clubs' representatives. His Highness Sheikh Khaled affirmed that the national clubs play an important role in developing the sports system. His Highness welcomed the attendees and praised the efforts made by the clubs in implementing programmes to contribute to achieving goals in accordance with the GSA policies to raise the level of the administrative and technical staff, which is reflected in the development of the club's levels and their affiliates. His Highness was briefed on the plans of the clubs to achieve success that serve the progress of the sports in the Kingdom. He highlighted the comprehensive development of the future vision that contributes to the development of sports to achieve the goals of Bahrain Vision 2030. For their part, the club's presidents and representatives expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness, stressing that His Highness's efforts will contribute to making more achievements in the sports sector. They pledged His Highness to continue their efforts towards achieving a brighter future for Bahraini sports. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for ZSNL affirmed that the youth of the Kingdom and around the world hold the key to the future. She expressed support to the campaign on empowering the youth in parliaments through the initiative of the Interparliamentary Union in line with the Royal Vision of making the youth the centre of the development process. Zanel said that the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, has contributed with visions and initiatives to empower the youth in the Kingdom. She also praised the efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa in this field. Zanel said that the role of the youth in Parliament is increasing and affirmed support for empowering the youth through legislation. Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fazea Ben Zanal, and the Speaker of the National Assembly of Serbia, Evica Dacic, have discussed the establishment of a parliamentary friendship committee between the two countries, in line with the vision of His Majesty the King on embracing the Bahraini Serbian relations and cooperation. She lauded the existing solid relations between the two friendly countries, which are based on mutual respect and consultations on vital issues, especially in the fields of economy, investment, agriculture, and natural resources. She highlighted the importance of exchange visits between the leaderships of the two countries in broadening bilateral cooperation. During her talks with the Serbian counterpart on the sidelines of the 143rd Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, the IPU, held in Madrid, Zanal stressed her keenness to develop a joint work mechanism to pave the way for exchanging legislative expertise. Serbia's National Assembly Speaker expressed pride in the distinguished relations between the two countries. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the finale of the ATP Challenger Championship. The event was also attended by His Majesty the King's Advisor for Youth and Sports Affairs, Bin Saleh Hindi, Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Muayyad, President of Bahrain Tennis Association, His Highness Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, the Chief Executive Officer of the General Sports Authority, Abdurrahman Asker. The Minister hailed the sports achievements of the Kingdom through the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. 
He also praised the youth and sports initiatives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He lauded the excellent performance of the players during the championship that is organised by the Public Security Sports Association. He appreciated the supportive role of the Bahrain Tennis Association for the Public Security Sports Association and the Public Security Officers Club for their excellent organisation to make the event a success. The Minister and the President of Bahrain Tennis Association distributed trophies and memorial gifts among the winners. The Secretary-General for the Representatives Council, Rashid Benajmi, delivered a speech during the Secretary-General of the National Assembly meeting in Spain, where he affirmed that the Digital Parliamentary Project is considered one of a kind projects of the Council. He added that launching the project in the Kingdom of Bahrain is in line with international directions and is also considered one of the Council's successful projects, especially during the pandemic, which reflects the success of the strategy set by the General Secretariat.